Welcome back to the Big Data Show, everyone. I'm your host, Nate Latimer. Today, we've got a great guest. Uh, Josh Marsden flew all the way in from Phoenix, Arizona. He's the founder and CEO of Arm5 Formula. MBA, very intelligent guy. He's um, an author and uh, also he scales e-commerce companies. So uh, very happy to have you here today, Josh. Looking forward to uh, chatting with you. I've got a lot of questions for you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, so Josh, how'd you get started in e-com? Uh, good question. Uh, so in 2012, I uh, decided to leave my corporate company that I was working for that I had built a, a seven-year career out of. And um, I decided to jump ship into a software company called Infusionsoft at the time. And uh, Infusionsoft Familiar is Familiar with them. Yep, I know. <laughs> we were just talking about it before, you know, the interview. But uh, they're now known as Keep. Um, but uh, I went over to Infusionsoft, and um, I used to sell their software to small businesses. And, and I was as I was uh, selling the software to small businesses, spending time on the phone, I was learning about what people were doing to make money online. And that's when I heard about e-commerce or digital products and... And, um, and then on top of that, too, I was also connecting with partners of Infusionsoft, and I was hearing how they were consulting with small businesses, helping them, uh, whether it's on the marketing side or even on just the business automation side. And that just really piqued my interest and just opened my eyes to internet marketing and e-commerce. And then in um, late 2012, Infusionsoft let me go. Uh, I started my month slow when it came to hitting my sales quota, and there was some friction between uh, the manager and myself. Sure, you know, um, uh, I just didn't really. <laughs> I, I was a manager in my prior career, and I didn't agree with like his management style and what he was doing, mm -hmm. and, he, and he could sense it. And um, and so he let me go, and then after that, I just did some freelance work and started working with different types of companies, including e-commerce, and um, that's really what got me started. And then um, a few months later, uh, I got another job, and um, that job. Uh, was uh, doing B2B door-to-door -door sales. And it was, so it was a you know, very grind-heavy job. Mm. And um, I told them early on, like, hey, I got to leave to go pick up my son. He's three. Uh, I just need to leave at 5 o'clock, you know, one to three days a week. They were like, oh, wait a second. Like, I, I don't think we can let you do that because we have a culture here. You have to work here till 7 p.m. every night. And I was like, okay, I don't know if this is going to work. Let me go talk right. to his mom. Let me see if I could work it out. And I strung along for a few weeks. Then finally they gave me an ultimatum. And then at that point I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going all in. And I went all in and the rest is history. All right on. So, uh, so you started your own business. So life of that business owner, that grind. Yep. Um, you know, what was that like in, in its uh, infancy? Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was long hours, a lot, you know, uh, working till midnight, uh, a lot. Um, it was, at times fighting like you know the um the, the depression from being trapped in your home office and not connecting with people and you know just and just you know business is challenging especially when you're learning it and mm -hmm. and you're trying Fear to the unknown trying all different types of things like you never really yeah. know where the business is going to come from in the beginning it's right like, it's scary stuff yeah you you have to hustle to get the sales then you got to deliver and you're going back and forth and back and forth and you're just making sure everything is working the way it's supposed to and at mm -hmm. the same time you have to make sure you're generating enough income to be able to take care of yourself at the same time. And, you know, so, you know, early on it was, it was fun, but it was challenging. It was fun because I had freedom mm -hmm. and, um, I used to go, you know, do boxing for example, or Muay Thai and I could do it in the middle of the day. And cause I, cause I knew that afterwards I would get back to work and I would get my work done. I right. would work till midnight if I had to, it's yeah. fine. You know, and, and that familiar. was, <laughs> that's what gave me like my early joy, you know, that early, just the, the little privileges that I had, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to do that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a lot of that. And then besides that, you know, there was just, um, growth challenges, you know, that I encountered over the years, but, you know, I just kept attacking it and just kept, um, overcoming it. So uh, whether it was through my own hard work or whether it was just listening to mentors, listening to friends, sure. getting feedback, doing research, putting the work in, learning, and, um, you know, like. You know, that, that's why the business has grown so, since. At, at what point, you know, uh, early on, you know, when, when you became a business owner and started doing your own thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, how far into it before you felt like you really got that win and you're like, okay, cool, I know I can do this? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, uh, I would say uh, probably um, early to mid-2015, I really felt like I had, you know, some wind. Um, I um, Late 2014... I became one of the first 12 uh, digital marketer certified partners when they first opened that program. Mm -hmm. And um, and that really just almost was like a 10x move for me. Because um, at the time, I was a marketing agency that was uh, very focused on Infusionsoft, 
but I knew that I loved marketing and I didn't want to work on just automating businesses. And then after I did that certification, I felt like that all of a sudden I had this extra credibility. I was also aligned with Digital Marketer and Ryan Dice and Roland Frazier and uh, Richard Lindner and Perry Belcher. Who, mm -hmm. And those are some titans in the industry. They've been around for a very long time. And, and um, you know, that that's really what gave me that initial wind, mm -hmm. I, I felt. Um, and then plus my prices went up too. And, and so I was really making some real money. Now it's a matter of, okay, now I got to really take care of this business at mm -hmm. that point. So, so talk to us about uh, Arm5, you know, what is the formula? <laughs> yeah, you know, how do you guys work? What makes you different? You know? Yeah. Um, it, you know, so the Arm5 formula, it's a scaling methodology for scaling e-com companies and just getting the best possible results from digital advertising um, by using a combination of brand marketing and direct response marketing. Because uh, we've seen through clients we used to work with when we were an agency to now when we have our own companies that when you have a very established brand and you're publishing valuable content consistently, and on top of that, you've got a full prospect to customer journey uh, that's you know multi-layered, step by step by step, mm -hmm. that you'll see really good ROAS. As long as you have all that done and you're doing it on a consistent basis with the content, with sure. providing value to the market, that you'll be able to get really good ROAS. Right. So you really built out you know along the way uh, a knowledge base that you turned into you know, really a formula like a curriculum, almost like a course that your clients can follow, right? And you, um, I think uh, when I was looking it up earlier, is what sixty um, ecom businesses? Uh, like how, how many companies have you worked with? Yeah, I mean, well, honestly, um, thousands really, because I also um, hosted several summits and mm -hmm. had thousands of people on each of those summits. Okay. Um, and then on, on top of that, I did client services. Uh, coaching services, uh, mostly client services. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I was leading um, the implementation and the optimization. Sure. And the performance of the ARM5 formula being applied to all of our clients. Mm -hmm. Got it. So um, let's say, I mean, you know, my company was really uh, making that shift into more of an e-commerce uh, style model, uh, more of a software as a service model. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you go to Invade Mate, uh, Innovate and Automate, um, then you're going to, it's marketing and advertising. So that's yep. exactly, you know, who you would coach. So for yep. somebody like me, what would that look and feel like um, going through that process with you guys and what's your growth rate um, for your, you know, e-com clients? Um, mm -hmm. I'm just curious what that experience feels like. Yeah. Well, you're already doing some of it from the sounds of it. Um, you're pub publishing valuable content. You're doing it consistently. You're doing a high quality job of it. Thank you. You know, I would just say amplify it, you know, and just re make sure you're targeting the right people. Sure. And, um, and I know we talked a little bit before the recording on who those people could possibly be, mm -hmm. um, but you can find them. You can find them using Facebook ads. You can find them using LinkedIn ads. You can find them using Google even. Right. Um, so, you, you know, and, and I would just amplify that content. This way you're really building that uh, that brand factor, that trust, uh, that credibility, and you're going to attract the right people to you. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's just a matter of just making sure that you have a really good funnel that's converting people into uh, leads and then also into customers. And um, and that's just a matter of really making sure you understand uh, your market, so you you know what message is going to be compelling, mm -hmm. or at least a few messages you can test and figure it out from there. And you've got some really good offers in mind that can convert them into your email list or then convert them into your customer base. Um, and then of course, delivering at that point, you know, you want to make sure obviously you deliver at a high level and then this way that the software is sticky sure, and, uh, and they stay on it long term. Yeah. That was going to be my next question is, uh, you know, whenever you're talking to a prospective client, um, you know, if you don't really think they have legs, um, you know, whatever it is they're offering, um, if they're not really solving a problem, if you don't think it's going to be sticky, yep. um, you know, do you just kind of turn them down or do you kind of uh, coach them into fixing their, uh, you know, what you disagree with? What is that? What is that process? Of uh, in a past life, like uh, we were an agency until late 2021. Mm -hmm. Now we just uh, manage our own e-com companies and then serve our um, our client base. We work with a lot of people that want to get involved with e-commerce. They want to create passive income in e-commerce. They want to build wealth in e-commerce. Like we've got an entire investor community uh, mm -hmm. that we serve. And so now we're not even selling agency services. So I would just do it just, just to help someone. I would give them feedback, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't have anything to sell them at this point. Uh, the only thing I do is I buy e-commerce companies that are between one and five million right now. Okay. Um, we're actually exploring some higher valuations 
and buying bigger companies right now even. And uh, we either buy the entire company or we buy a majority share. And we have a very rigorous process to make sure that we're buying established, successful, profitable day one winners. Mm -hmm. um, and this way we can scale them up because we want to package them in a portfolio roll up sure. and sell them. And we want to do that a few times over the next four years. Got it. So you do like an audit of the company, make sure yep. their financials or books and everything oh, yeah. are, they are making those revenues yep. and year over year growth. Um, so are yep. those the main variables you look at? Um, those are some of them. Are, yeah. are you trying to have like a diverse portfolio of a bunch of different types of e-com companies so the investors have options um to choose from so yeah it's like kind of like a menu or like what does that look like I mean, yeah how, how many yeah e-com companies um are uh do you own right now i guess yeah no, no no problem um yeah so i've got um nine e-com companies two that we're uh, buying next month in september uh cool. 2023 and um, actually, we just signed another LOI, so that one will be probably in October. Okay. Um, so we're buying about one to two companies every month right now, mm -hmm. and um, we'll probably ramp that up towards the end of the year when we uh, do our first uh, private equity fund in e-commerce, and then mm -hmm. we'll buy maybe five to ten. Very cool. Yep. Okay. So what does that look like for the company that's being acquired? Um, we'll start there, and then um, move on to the investors. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, for the company that we're acquiring, we typically take the whole company over. Um, we might keep some staff, we might not. Just it depends on our assessment of the company and whether we need to keep some of the team members in place. Mm -hmm. um, but we're always looking to optimize, obviously. And, and from a marketing advertising standpoint, we typically are replacing whatever marketing advertising staff or agencies that they would, they've been using. Just because we know with our team that's done over 650 million in the last two decades, that that's best in our hands. Sure. And, and we can scale it up. Um, so that's, you know, typically how we assess, you know, the e-com companies we buy and how we approach it. And then sometimes, you know, we do, if we see the opportunity for a partnership and partnerships can be, you know, um, they can be a little dicey and, you know, a little sensitive. And so it, we really have, have to gauge this, uh, to really make sure that if we want to partner up with someone, that they're going to be a really good partner. Sure. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Cause Partners other, can be difficult. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, unfortunately I'm dealing with like, you know, one right now, for example, that sometimes, you know, he um, he could provide some friction and get in his own way, basically. Sure. And um, and we, we have to, you know, obviously mitigate that and deal with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, OK, so let's shift over to the investors. So, you know, you've got these e-com companies, um, you know, you got you know, a dozen or so, it looks like. So yep. uh, if, you know, I'm an investor and I want to evaluate these, do you, like what do I receive from you guys um, so that you know it's just really easy to understand the company, understand what their projections look like, understand you know um, what my eventual ROI is gonna be, yep. um, you know, how granular does it get? And uh, I guess the metadata of you know, what their you know, cost per customer acquisition is at the uh, e-commerce company level, you know, how much information uh, is transparent to them anything they ask for okay yeah right, fair yeah i mean um i go live every thursday with our investors community and um i present new opportunities i'll answer any questions people have i'll dive into different materials attached to a business this way they can do their full review mm -hmm. and then if they want to do more due diligence they could jump on a call with us and and we're completely open and just transparent anything you ask for we'll show you um, that's the way we, uh, you know, do business. Very cool. Can you give us like a specific, um, like uh, success story, um, example, uh, both on the e-com side, um, as the company getting acquired and then also the, uh, investors investing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, we've got two companies, uh, one in the supplement space that sells very unique supplements. Uh, you really can't find these supplements just about anywhere. There's a few brands that sell the same types of supplements, but, those brands don't have any type of market clout. Mm -hmm. And um, this business, you know, came to us, uh, never did more than like 75K in a month. And okay. um, in April, we had our highest historical month in that company uh, with 140,000 in sales. Great. So that was one example. Um, we also had another company that same exact month that um, never did more than I think it was 115,000. And uh, they hit 130,000. Okay, cool. So month. a little appreciation there. Um, yep. Is, is that typically just um, attributed towards the, the difference in marketing that you're doing? Um, or like what? Um, where does that credit go? Yeah, for the increase? How do you guys do it? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, between those two cases, I mean, uh, so the first company, they, um, they really saw improvements because of 
our uh, paid advertising because okay. they really weren't running any paid ads. They were an organic brand. Um, there's a personal brand attached. Uh, he's done a great job of really um, creating an audience and serving an audience and getting traffic. He gets like a million views a month, mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't doing paid advertising. And um, when you have a strong brand and you do paid advertising, you can see very strong ROAS if you know what you're doing on the marketing, on the advertising side. But yep. you know, the, uh, the foundation's there to see like really good ROAS. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really what caused that company to see that, that historical high. Mm -hmm. And then um, with the other company, the other company had a working funnel um, that was doing well. And it was just a matter of pouring more gas on the fire and just managing the business right. Sure. And we did that. And then um, we were able to see the a historical high in April as well. All right, very cool. So let's dive into paid advertising a little bit because, you know, that's um, obviously a very broad range of things that it could apply to. Yep. Um, you know, and there's plenty of companies out there that do it, you know, um, yeah, just the, the, the bidding process, uh, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out the best, uh, you know, I guess, area channels really to mm -hmm. um, spend before you hit the gas pedal, yep. test. You know, like, um, are you guys using some sort of like uh, algorithm? Um, is there any artificial intelligence in, involved? You know, everything was AI boom. Everything's getting a little bit easier to predict where you should spend your um, advertising dollars. Yep. So is that something that you guys just have a lot of experience in to where um, you just uh, really can evaluate a company and, and guide them? Or do you guys really just have it just set down uh, more as like a machine process? Yeah, it's not quite a machine process. Um, we use some very sophisticated tools um, like Wicked Reports, for example, uh, that give you uh, complete marketing attribution at a very high level. And um, so we're able, we're able to make the right decisions, you know, when we're managing ads because we're using tools like that. We're paying for it um, because you can't base your decisions off of what Facebook gives you, for example, or Google gives you. Th mm -hmm. Those um, maybe at a, at a smaller ad spend budget, you have no choice because you don't want to spend more on a tool like Wicked Reports. But... At some point, you gotta grow up. You gotta get an adult tool to be mm -hmm. able to really do an adult job, and um, and and be able to see clearly like where your ROI is across the board and all your advertising campaigns, you know, creatives, audiences, you name it, because mm -hmm. you can drill it down. Sure. And you also want to look at the right metrics because um, you know most people look at just the sale, just that one sale. They don't look at how much do I make off of that customer over the lifetime, and how did I get that customer. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you want to look at because you want to maximize the back end, you know, the right. profits of a business, the customer lifetime value. And so you really want to acquire the right customers that are going to lead to the most lifetime value. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, is there uh, some sort of balance on you know, video advertising versus display advertising? You know, is it really kind of budget based? Like, where do you really stretch and see the most bang for your client's buck? Yeah. Yep, I mean, still Kinda video. Um, video is definitely very relevant. Like YouTube um, or? You know. um, well, we uh, run a lot of Facebook, Instagram. Okay. You know, Facebook, Instagram is our number one. Um, YouTube is definitely after that. Same with Google. Mm -hmm. uh, those two we really focus on. And then because those two are are um, working, they're working advertising channels that uh, are robust platforms, give you a ton of traffic. You can scale to the moon on both of those. On just one of them, you can scale to the moon. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need TikTok yet. You don't need Twitter. You don't need any of those. Those are good advertising channels to maybe expand to and test, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to base your business off of that. You really want to focus on one of the big two, which is Facebook or Google, based on which audience you're trying to reach. Got it. Got it. Very cool. Okay. So um, what would be like your uh, big, hairy, uh, just audacious goal for uh, Arm5? Yeah, well, um, we want to turn a lot of people into millionaires, for one, um, because their success is our success. You know? So every client we work with, we want to turn every client's cash into a 5x plus ROI, at minimum, uh, over the next three years or less. Mm -hmm. And um, how we're going to do that is obviously by doing a really good job with every company that we buy and scaling them up and managing them sure. uh, responsibly. But the big exit goal that's really going to reward all of us is us packaging up businesses and then uh, selling them to private equity and doing it sure. through strategic like partners. Up, sort of, okay, got yep. it. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Um, we want to do that like twice in the next four years. Okay. And and this particular model, you know, with uh, e-com companies and the investors, uh, how long have you guys been doing that? Since uh, early 2022. Okay. So, yep. so recently. Yeah. So you're still building out that track record so that, yep. you know, you can boast that right. down the road. Right. Um, okay. Yep. Interesting. Mm-hmm. 
All right. So um, if investors want to participate, you know, how can they find you? How can they get involved? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, everybody's on Facebook. So I would recommend just going to Facebook, uh, open up your mobile app and just type in e-commerce investors club. Okay. Um, we've got over a thousand people in here. Uh, it's a very robust group. Um, I go live every single Thursday for 30 minutes to an hour. And um, when I go live, I'm there to serve. I'm there to provide clarity, uh, give feedback, uh, show people what we're doing. So this, this way they can get excited, they can get involved. And um, I, I show our new acquisitions. Um, it's a great group. I highly recommend anybody that's trying to uh, shorten that gap between where they're at and where they want to go when it comes to their wealth building, that they should be in that group. Because in my opinion, e-commerce is one of the best, if not the best place to invest. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. It's just a great scalable model. And uh, Josh, talk to us a little bit about the book. I know you're an author, so uh, <laughs> I don't want to you know, kick you back to Phoenix without uh, bringing up your book. So. Yeah, all good. I've done two books, um, You know, uh, Facebook Advertising, Trends and Strategies for E-Commerce, uh, 2019 and 2020 edition. Mm -hmm. uh, 2019, you know, it did well, but that was just my getting my feet wet. Sure. You know, but my 2020 edition uh, was a number one bestseller in 11 markets on day one. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So I, that had to feel pretty good. <laughs> it did. It did. Um, you know, it was, uh, it, you know, I remember, you know, uh, when, you know, I when it happened, you know, becoming an international bestseller, um, I, you know, I just was like, wow, I get to change my title now. You know, I, you know, I'm just a, I'm a normal guy come, you know, came from central Texas, basically. I grew up a military brat, you know, I'm, I come from a very blue collar family. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, definitely been a blessing, you know, being able to call myself an inter international best-selling author. Yeah. Very cool. And you have your own uh, show as well. Uh, your marketing show. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, the e-commerce performance marketing show. Um, I actually, I, I closed that back in like uh, mid 2021 mm -hmm. um, just because I knew at that point I was going to be pivoting. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to really reduce my time spent on stuff like that since I sure. knew I was going to go into the aggregator model. Yeah, you cranked out a lot of episodes. I, I was did. checking it out. <laughs> you got over 100 episodes on there, a lot of great content, guys, yeah. if you want to check that out. Yep. Uh, we'll drop links for that in the bottom of the episode, too. But yep. Josh, such a pleasure, man, chatting with you and learning about ARM5. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.